When the LA Metro began a project to revamp their outdated subway system, construction crews prepared themselves for a whole lot of work and a whole lot of dirt. But shortly after tunneling their way beneath the city, the workers made a startling discovery that no Hollywood movie could have prepared them for. Remains uncovered beneath abandoned Hollywood subway shocks experts. Los Angeles may be known as the home of Hollywood's biggest stars, but it's also home to something far less exciting. Traffic. The average driver spends more than 120 hours a year sitting in gridlock, and all that wasted fuel costs the city close to $10 billion a year. The city needed to come up with a solution. Lawmakers and scientists proposed several alternatives to this miserable commute, however, they never considered the solution to LA's traffic woes was lying just beneath their feet. The Los Angeles Metro Rail services over 300,000 passengers daily, and local officials realized it could be servicing much more. And so, LA Metro broke ground on two new light rails and began a complete extension of the Metro's Purple Line in 2015. But while getting more people off I-405 and onto the subways was a reward in and of itself, something far more valuable was waiting just beneath those busy LA streets. It wasn't uncommon for underground work to get held up over an unusual odd or end sticking up from the dirt. Project Monitor Francisco Palacios had made his fair share of strange discoveries in these expansive caverns, but in digging down for the LA Metro project, his crew unearthed a find that was nothing short of historic. Palacios knew he found something special the moment he spotted the object in the dirt, and as he brushed the rubble away, he only grew more certain. Yet the project monitor was no expert on finds of such nature, so he called in some extra help. That help came in the form of paleontologist Ashley Legger, an expert in Pleistocene megafauna on call, to identify any prehistoric remains unearthed by the Purple Line crew. If Palacios's discovery was, in fact, a Pleistocene fossil, however, it would come as no surprise. See, Los Angeles has historically been a hotbed for Ice Age fossils, specifically in the areas surrounding the La Brea Tar Pits. From saber-toothed cats and dire wolves to short-faced bears and round sloths, an enormous variety of prehistoric remains have turned up just miles away from the Hollywood sign. Palacios and his crew also came across a handful of small fossils while digging, the very same kind Legger expected to find as she descended below the surface that fateful morning. But upon arriving at the site of the discovery, the paleontologist was utterly blown away. My first thought was. Oh my gosh, this looks like skull material, Legger recalled of the fossil, and as the excavation continued, her inkling as to its identity only grew stronger. Eventually, the crew managed to pull the fossil from the dirt, revealing a creature that Legger had waited her entire career to find. A Colombian mammoth. The skull of the creature was completely intact, having belonged to a juvenile of the species between 6 and 12 years old. And while most fossils of this nature are typically stone impressions, this incredible discovery was all bone. It's a dream come true for a paleontologist, Legger told CBS News. This is the bucket list you always want to find at some point in your career, and then it's one of the first things we found here. The Colombian mammoth is a relative of the better-known woolly mammoth, though the former were much larger in size. While most woolly mammoths were the size of modern-day elephants, Colombian mammoths stood an average of 13 feet tall and weighed over 22,000 pounds. Unfortunately, the skull was all they recovered from the site, as the rest of the enormous creature was nowhere to be found. Still, Legger was eager to remove this fossil from the caverns and begin uncovering more about its history. Placing the skull into a plaster jacket, Legger and her team transported the fossil to a nearby lab for further analysis. While there, they decided to name the mammoth Hayden after actress Hayden Panettiere, whom Legger had been watching hours earlier on CMT's Nashville. But without Hayden's body, researchers couldn't say for sure how the young mammoth died, though they did have a few theories. Despite no sign of injury to the head, some believed that a large predator like a saber-toothed tiger or dire wolf could have taken her down. Another theory suggested that Hayden may have fallen into those notorious tar pits, as the conditions here would have been perfect for fossilization. For animals to preserve, they have to die somewhere where they're buried fast and exposed to low oxygen conditions, explained Legger. 
Regardless of how she died, Hayden will soon be taken to the Natural History Museum of Los Angeles, where she and the other fossils uncovered during the Metro Line project will be displayed for all to enjoy. For Legger, it's this opportunity to educate and astonish that really made the find worthwhile. It's one thing to go to a museum and look at specimens of fossils and say, oh, this dinosaur was found in China, and this dinosaur was found in Mongolia, Legger said. It's different when you would look at that sign and say, this fossil was found literally in our backyard. And as for the Purple Line extension, the initiative isn't expected to be completed until 2026, with the Greater Metro Line project extending well beyond 2051. As construction crews like Palacios's continue to dig their way beneath LA, there's no telling what kind of incredible treasures they'll stumble upon next. Yet the next big find may not turn up in LA or even in the United States at all. Europe has seen plenty of treasures unearthed from beneath its cities, and just recently, yet another incredible discovery was made by construction workers only this time, it was in a place far more disgusting than a subway tunnel. In mid-November 2020, a sewage system in Athens, Greece, that was plagued with a filthy infrastructure for years, was set to finally get a thorough cleaning from city workers. The heavy machinery was rolled out, and the workers began the immense undertaking. This was a job that required the men to get down on their hands and knees to dig out sewage that was caked on inches thick from years of neglect. Once the outer pipes were clean, then began the journey into the belly of the underground tunnels. Though it was a dirty job, the workers also felt some sense of adventure. In European sewers, there's always the chance to stumble upon some lost relic. Imagine you were a sewer worker making your way through the underground abyss when suddenly your flashlight landed upon this menacing stair. Well, if you were a worker who lived in first century Rome, it probably would have. This massive stone face is known as the Bocca della Verita, which translates to mouth of truth. This old drain pipe is now a popular place for tourists to snap pictures when visiting the Basilica di Santa Maria in Cosmodon. In historian Stephen Halliday's book An Underground Guide to Sewers, or Down, Through and Out in Paris, London, New York and C, he explained the massive mouth of truth was used to give access to the sewers beneath the Temple of Hercules. Interestingly, even though we view sewer systems today as mazes full of muck, centuries ago many sewers were seen as incredible feats of design. One of these astonishing creations was the Cloaca Maxima, said to have been constructed around 600 BC. The Cloaca Maxima is one of the world's earliest sewage systems, so at the time of construction it introduced technology people never experienced before. Giovanni Battista Piranesi, an 18th-century artist and architect, boasted of the architecture in many of his paintings. In fact, the Cloaca Maxima was touted as such an amazing sight it actually became a must-see feature of the grand tour for young English gentlemen completing their education, Halliday explained. Then, during the 1800s, other sewer systems flaunted their own unique style. Around the mid-1800s, London completely renovated their sewage facilities to include new powerful pumps, and they adorned the insides of them with ornately colored ironwork. And, even today, Japan still puts a unique twist on their manhole covers. Nearly 95% of Japan's municipalities are full of manholes containing incredible community-specific artwork, which began started springing up many decades back to help convince locals of the importance of revamping the country's struggling sewage system. Even today around the world you can find awesome structures created from old sewage structures, like this community park that put benches inside massive tunnel openings. But the tunnels the Athens crew was exploring were far from renovated. They were essentially a time capsule going back to ancient times. The workers combed through rancid liquid little by little, ensuring the job was thoroughly done so they wouldn't have to revisit it anytime soon. But, the whole project came to a halt when one worker saw something strange lodged in a crevice. It didn't look like anything the crew had ever seen before. They dislodged it, brought it to the surface, and cleaned it off. Then, they stared at it in awe. It was the head to a sculpture of an Olympian god. That god was Hermes. In Greek mythology, Hermes represented wealth, luck, fertility, sleep, language, thieves, and travel. He was also the vital messenger of the gods on Mount Olympus. 
Handing the piece over to historians, it was determined that this particular statue was created in the style of a celebrated Greek sculptor. Alchemines was a famous artist whose work flourished around 500 BC, and tradition connects him to a temple of Zeus in Olympia and a statue of Ares. Naturally, workers were now intrigued as to how Alchemines Hermes ended up in a sower. The Greek Ministry of Culture immediately learned of the find, and they sent men to figure out the origins of the sculpture head. After some deliberation, they came to a fascinating conclusion. The ministry determined the head originated during the 3rd or 4th century BC, and it was actually used as a street marker to help travelers find their way on lengthy journeys. Naturally, the discovery soon hit the news and social media like storm. One of the men who helped dredge up the stone head put a photo of it on his Facebook account. Other news outlets took the opportunity to crack jokes. One paper wrote, oh, how the mighty have fallen. It was certainly a day those sower workers will ever forget. They went into the tunnels expecting to find the usual critters scurrying about and heaps of useless trash, but this time they uncovered a special piece of history. While these men get paid, there are some who venture into the sower for fun. Even though nowadays most sowers aren't nearly as enticing, there are actually people who are sower enthusiasts, labeling themselves drain spotters. They love documenting unique manhole covers, but even they know there can be nightmarish things that lurk beneath them. When they got the call to investigate a water blockage, London sanitation workers had no idea what they were about to get themselves into. But as they descended into the underground tunnel, it quickly became clear that something wasn't right. What they came across was horrifying. A massive blob of congealed fat, oil, and waste had formed in the sewer. They were about to find out exactly how massive this thing was. This congealed mass is known as a fatberg. But the workers had never seen one quite like this. They discovered that this one weighed about 143 tons, that's about the weight of 24 fully grown elephants. And the fatberg was long, too. The mass of fat and garbage stretched out over 820 feet below the ground. For reference, that's nearly three times the height of the Statue of Liberty. Removing this thing wasn't going to be an easy task. Once all that oil and fat congeals, it becomes a solid block that's hard as a rock and tough as concrete. Oddly this wasn't the first time the country has been plagued by a fatberg. Charlie Ewart was a sanitation worker back in 2018 when he was called to investigate a situation in Sidmouth. He'd been at this job for 15 years, but he'd never encountered anything quite like this. Immediately upon descending into the sewer, Ewart knew something was wrong. Sitting there like a giant boulder made from sanitary wipes, used condoms, and fat was the largest fatberg he'd ever seen. I saw it and thought, what on earth? Ewart remembered. It does look like something out of a horror scene, all congealed and glossy and matted together with all kinds of things. And this one was a doozy, too. The Sidmouth Fatberg was 210 feet long. Standing up, that would be taller than the Leaning Tower of Pisa. But it wasn't just the sheer length of the thing that posed a problem. There was also the issue of the smell. According to Alex Saunders, a sewer network manager, Fatbergs give off a putrid scent like rotting meat mixed with the odor of a smelly toilet. Yuck. But fatbergs don't just appear out of nowhere. Experts say that the congealed masses grow slowly for years before reaching that enormous size. So how did no one notice it for such a long time? There are thousands of miles of pipes and tunnels that make up Great Britain's sewage system, so it makes sense that the giant blob of fat went unnoticed. But once they locate the fatberg, they have to eliminate it. Thames Water, one of the major sanitation companies that deals with these fatbergs, described what had to be done as an eight-week sower war. And war might be a completely accurate way to describe it. Sanitation workers use powerful jets of water, or just a regular old spade, to break up the fatty blob before it gets sucked up into tanks to be used for fuel. Cutting into the fatberg poses its own dangers, though. If you thought the stench of a fatberg was bad enough, it's nothing compared to the hydrogen sulfide that gets trapped underneath the stinky colossus. That odor doesn't wash off it clings onto the workers for weeks after. It's very, very sickly. It just smells awful, said Tim Henderson, who's been flushing out fatbergs for seven years. 
like a cross between a sweaty, cheesy type smell mixed with sewage. But it gets worse. Because Christmas is a popular holiday for big, meat-heavy dinners, tons and tons of grease gets poured down the drain every year when it comes around. That means the holiday season is also fatberg season. They're costly, too. Britain alone is plagued by over 80,000 fatbergs every single year, leaving thousands with flooded homes. Cleaning up the mess they leave behind costs upwards of $1.6 million. So what's the solution? Bin it, don't block it, says Vince Minnie, a sanitation supervisor at Thames Water. That's the answer. Let that leftover grease solidify and toss it in the trash, otherwise you might have a fatberg on your hands. But these greasy blobs are just the tip of the fatberg when it comes to water contamination. China's struggle with pollution makes a building-sized fatberg look practically tame. Can you imagine a future where a fake skyline must be erected for tourists because the real landscape is too smoggy? That's a pretty darn bleak. You might as well stay home at that point. This smog looks like a disaster film, but it's all too real. Air pollution is so common in China that people don't think twice to commute to work as if everything was normal. It's become a part of daily life. Here, chemical waste lies stagnant beneath a sheet of ice. One woman stops to fill up a water bottle of the nasty stuff, just to show other people how bad the conditions have gotten. It looks like a river of blood, not water. In this photo, a fisherman wades into the water to sift through thousands of poison fish. Clearly, there must be some seriously nasty chemicals flowing through those waves. Massive oil spills are another example of just how much pollution is out of control in countries like China. Just imagine how tough it must be to clean up something like this the guy's suit is covered in it. Cleaning another oil spill off the coast requires a team of many people, and yet even their numbers don't make this effort any less daunting. Look at the scale of that mess. These clouds of smog cover the Beijing skyline. If you didn't know that they were caused by pollution, there would almost be something eerily fantastic about this dense cloud coverage. Water that's filled to the brim with waste is such a frequent occurrence in some parts of China that it doesn't deter young children like the one pictured here from swimming in it. A flood recedes after scattering trash all over the street. Rather than make any effort to clean it up, the citizens are so used to this level of pollution that they just focus on walking through the mess to get to where they need to go. This factory sends plumes of smoke into the sky every day, and the folks riding by on their bicycles are so used to sights like this that all they do is keep moving. It must be so difficult to breathe. How gross is this dead fish floating to the top of a freshwater lake? It's clear that this is no longer water that can even sustain much life. The troubling green color is enough to make anyone's stomach turn over. Chemical waste and sewage litter the land around this pipe, transforming the natural beauty into an unsightly chemical mess. Look at that shocking pink color, not to mention all of the waste piling up. It's hard not to be saddened by this sewage pipe spilling its contents into the ocean, filling the water with not just human waste, but with whatever else happened to make its way into the city's sewers. These plastic bottles actually litter a forgotten corner of the Great Wall, one of China's most legendary accomplishments and one of the wonders of the world. What a true tragedy. In some parts of China, the pollution is more visible than in other parts of the country. This might look like a scene from some movie set, but it's actually a photograph of a plant where old cars are burned down. In other parts of the world, canals are used to transport goods and can make for a fun and scenic way to travel around a city. However, this canal in China is so polluted that the waters are actually eating away at the adjacent buildings. People will leave their garbage wherever it's the most convenient for them. Some folks will try to clear the trash away, while others like this man settle for simply making a walkable path through the muck. The ancient art of Tai Kai has been practiced in China for thousands of years. In the morning hours, students gather to practice this form of martial arts to help them stay healthy. Unfortunately, the smog can't be very good for their health. The constant demand for manufacturing in China has had a tremendous cost not just on the cities, but on the countryside, as well. Now even rural China is beginning to feel the effects of pollution and the blight of deforestation. This Chinese bride was hoping to get a couple of beautiful photographs to commemorate her big day. 
Unfortunately, the air conditions were so bad outside that she was forced to wear a mask. That's certainly memorable, but probably not in the way she intended. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to like and subscribe.